Hey guys, welcome to Reds Projects. Today, the Falcon's up on the hoist because I want to replace the transmission cooler lines. Now, seven or eight years ago, when I did the auto swap, I did what I thought was best at the time, and that was rubber transmission lines with push lock fittings. Now, if you don't know what push lock fittings are, there's one there. They're just like a real aggressive barb, and when you use the right size hose, it's a really tight fit, it's really hard to get on and you don't need to run a hose clamp with it and they work fine like I mean this has been together for like I said seven or eight years I've made like 20 something 25 passes in it lots of burnouts lots of street driving lots of thrashing on the road I think I've got 20 maybe 30,000 k's on the auto so it's worked I've had no issues with it but in those past seven or eight years I've learned that if you're bracing it or doing anything aggressive you should probably have braided lines and I don't want to be that guy that has an oil line pop off at the drag strip like halfway down and you oil down the track and just ruin it for everyone so before I race it next I want to upgrade the lines to braided just for peace of mind All right, so I got the bumper off. There's my transmission cooler and my dirty air filter. I might take that off and give it a clean. It's pretty disgusting. But yeah, that's where my transmission cooler is. It gets air through the fog light hole and I've got a fan behind it. You can't really see, but there's a little electric thermo fan there and got some holes so the air can go through into the, the wheel arch. And like I thought, I have barb fittings with hose clamps up here, so I might take this cooler off, take it with me, see if I can find something the same size and same configuration, but with AN fittings. That way I can run braided lines from transmission to cooler and not have any issues at all. I'll quickly whip that off and then we'll go, go to VPW and um, see what can be done. So I'm back from VPW. This is the new trans cooler I got. So my old one was a Hayden one. This one had the barb fittings. This one's a PWR. See, PWR, they're both Australian made. They are identical, except this one's got AN fittings on it. And the other one's got barbs. Like if I lay this one over the top of it, it's exactly the same. So I've just drilled a couple extra holes that I need to mount it and to mount my fan to it I just copied them from this guy and I've given it some black paint because they're normally silver but I was really happy to get this one because it's like I said it's identical so it's gonna behave exactly the same it's gonna mount up exactly the same and it's gonna be spot on so as well as that obviously I got some fittings and I got some braided line as well so I'll start ripping all this stuff off all right so after the last video yesterday I pulled the trans lines off and mounted up my new trans cooler. And then shortly after that, Shep came over. So he packed up out here, went inside, had a couple of drinks, watched the footy, had a couple of drinks, played some pool, had a couple of drinks, watched some other stuff on TV, and then we had a couple of drinks. So I feel a bit secondhand today. Everyone else is still in bed. I'm just um, getting an early start to try and get this done today. But enough of me and my problems. There's the transmission lines. So you can imagine the auto being right where my foot is. 
the lines would come out, go around the back, run up along the rail. I had a um, joiner here so I could take the front section off if I was changing intercoolers or anything. It would run along the bottom of the intercooler and radiator and stuff along here and then go up to the cooler. So they're decently long lines and I don't know how well you can see that but I've got the new cooler up so. <clears throat> I'll tidy up a little bit and we'll start making these braided lines for it. All right, so I'm gonna start on the first fitting of my first line and I'm gonna go from the auto to the cooler. So we're starting at the auto. So I'm gonna use a 90 and you wanna have a nice clean cut on the, the braid. So I'll just cut the end off this. The easiest way I've found is to get some masking tape, wrap it around the line and then cut through it. It helps stop the braid from um, fraying. And just cut off any little pointy bits with some side cutters. All right, take our fitting. Take the nut part off and put the rest aside. So we've got to jam the hose in there that way. So I'll put it in the vise. Got my alloy soft jaws on so it shouldn't mark up the fitting too much. Take our tape off and try and jam this thing in there. All right, so after struggling a bit, I got it pushed all the way in. You want to make sure the hose is right at the back of the threads there. Blow out some of the crap that's in there. Put the fitting in the other way in the vise. Get the other part of the fitting. Put just a little bit of grease or oil or something on here because this is going to be squeezing inside the the hose i just use a little bit of this um, rubber grease crap i've got and screw her in tighten it up nice and tight and we've got one completed fitting all right, so I've got the lines all finished up. We'll have a look. It comes out the auto, comes around, runs along with the fuel lines. I decided not to put a join in it after all. Just made it one continuous line all the way. You can see it up, runs around the back of the trans cooler. So while I was doing the lines, I drained all the um, fluid out the auto. So, I figured I might as well give it an oil change while I'm here. So I'll drop it down, put some fluid in it, fire it up, check for leaks, and then I guess I'll just go put the bar back on. So unfortunately I did not have enough ATF on hand to um, fill this thing up. I had about three, three and a half liters. Chucked that in, fired it up, ran it through the gears, put the dipstick in and didn't even register. So need to put like another liter or two in it and um, that should be sweet. Didn't look like it's leaking anywhere, but um, I'll take it for a drive when I get it topped up and um, double check everything. But um, yeah, I'll probably do that sometime through the week or if not next weekend. So I'll see you then. All right, welcome back. It's the following weekend. I didn't get much time through the week to work on this thing, so here we are. I did get some ATF though, so I'll top it up, we'll run it for a while, check for leaks, and then we'll put this nugget back together and get it off the hoist.
right, trans is definitely up to temp now. 90 degrees is pretty normal for this thing cruising and around. Um, I'll just double check the level. If that's fine, then it's pretty much done. Just gotta put the thing back together. All right, well, that's pretty much it for this episode. Um, just got to take it for a drive, double check the fluids, make sure everything's sweet. I'm glad I got these new lines on. This is one of the things I wanted to do before I race it next. And I really want to get it back to Heathcote and race it again. So probably in the next couple of weeks, maybe in a month at the latest, I want to take this back to Heathcote, go make some passes in it, go have some fun. Um, nothing's changed since last time, so I don't expect it to really go quicker, but I might get that one pass where I um, go quicker than I did last time. Then after that, I'm going to look at doing a few more things to it, just minor small things to improve it. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. It's been about a year since I've been at the drag, like raced at the drag, so I'm looking forward to it. So that's it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.